Hello everybody and welcome to the 18th part of our practical flash tutorial series. In this video we're going to be talking a little bit more about password hashing. So <clears throat> in our init.py file here we saw how we were using passlib.hash and SHA-256 crypt and then we saw down here uh, that we're actually we're using that immediately when we encrypt this password and then we saw in the database what that actually looked like. But then the question is if uh, you know how secure is it if every time the hash is identical so how do we actually how do how should we hash passwords and uh, and then how do we actually verify that the hash is the same so uh, I think the best way instead of telling you is to just show you so let's go ahead and we'll come into our you know flask toots like main directory here and make sure you're in var www flask apps, flask flask ass flask app uh, slash flask app and now we're gonna go uh, new file and we're just gonna call it pwhash.py that'll bring up a pi file here and in here we're gonna go ahead and do from passlib.hash import sha256 underscore crypt and then here we're gonna have a password equal something and then password to equal something for now we're gonna say password the original password will be SHA-256 crypt.encrypt um, and then we'll say password. We'll just say the password literally is password. So this will be basically the encrypted version of uh, let's say this will be kind of like the registered password, right? So this will be this is mimicking the path we took when the user registered. This is what we did to the string version of whatever they entered for password. Here we're saying they entered password. Then password two will act, will, will kind of surmise, I suppose, that this is okay. Now the user is actually logging in and uh, they're gonna do shot, when they log in, they're gonna enter a password and we're gonna do a SHA-256 crypt on the encrypt, encrypted version of whatever they enter. And let's say uh, they too enter password. So that these should be um, identical, or, or at least the user input was identical. But if we just use a simple hash, uh, even with SHA, let's say SHA-256 hash, if we just use a simple hash, what ends up happening is every time someone types in password, the hash will always be the same. It will always look identical. And as I showed before in the database, two users had the same password, with, which was actually the number five, but the hash of their number five password was different. It wasn't the same. And so if you just use a simple hash, what's going to end up happening or what can happen is people have massive hash tables and you only need to generate that hash table one time. Once it's generated, it's generated. And people sell these hash tables or you can actually probably find one for free nowadays. And so then all someone would have to do is search for their, that hash that they found in that hash table and they would know what the password was. That's not good. So what ends up happening is you hash with what is called a salt. And a salt is just an arbitrary additional batch of letters and maybe numbers and symbols or whatever to the original user enter password. You can append it to the end, you can put it in the middle, you can do all kinds of stuff. But again, if you use the same salt every single time, it, all someone would need at that point is just to know your salt or guess your salt. And if they have access to your pa or your database, uh, you can actually kind of derive what the salt is even. And so that's obviously not the best either. So we're going to be using hash or passlib hash and you'll see how we can actually use different salts or different methodology and what that actually causes. Um, it's pretty cool. So password, password2 and then we'll print. Let's print out password and print password2. So what is this that we're printing out? We're printing out the value, the hash, the SHA-256 hash of password and password. These are identical hashes of identical uh, strings of text. They're absolutely the same, right? You can see that right here. So let's save that. And uh, there's our file. So now we just need to do python pwhash.py. Let's run it. And you can see that, yes, indeed, here we have one, and here we have another one, and they are not identical. Let's run that one more time. And then you can see that these ones again are not identical so sometimes it has to do with the order like the first one the second one the third one with Python as far as randomly picking a salt and randomly picking 
Uh, true random is actually really difficult to find in computers and a lot of flaws in uh, encryption type services like two-factor authentication or uh, generating let's say wallet IDs uh, like private public and private keys for wallets for Bitcoin let's say that's where a lot of them fail is in the randomness and if someone can, can predict the randomness because a computer can't actually be random uh, that we, we have problems so anyways this isn't meant to be a tutorial on encryption. I'm by no means an expert. But anyways, you can see that the hashes are not identical. We could go even further to actually, you know, question. We could say, you know, if password equals password two colon um, print yay else uh, print, you know, something simple like this uh, failure. Okay, save that. And we can run this one more time, and we can see that it says failure, that they did not match, <laughs> okay? Uh, so that's not good. So how do we actually verify these? Well, luckily for us, that is also included in Passlib. So now what we can do is we can actually say print SHA-256 underscore crypt dot verify, and uh, we're going to verify that, let's say, um, because basically what we're trying to do is let's say your your password here in your database is literally password. Uh, so we're going to try to compare the user's enter. So, okay. So your database contains a hash. So we want to compare something to a hash. So our question would be compare. What do we want to compare? Well, we want to compare the string password uh, to the hash of what? Well, we want to compare the string password to the hash of uh, password. Okay, so the, the variable, basically. Um, okay, so we'll save that. And now we'll come over to our script, run it, and we see that it returns the Boolean of true, that they are identical. So again, what this is mimicking is when a user goes to log in, Whatever they type as their username password, that's what you would put right here. And then you want to verify that hash because that's going to be um, event. Well, actually, that one doesn't really need to be hashed because we're not actually going to do anything with that. We're going to immediately take that. And then when we verify it, it will be hashed. And then you're going to compare it and make sure that's verifiable against the original hash. But again, if someone was to get your database, every hash, even for identical passwords, is different. So if someone wanted to figure out someone's password, because generally they want that user's password, because what they're looking for is the user's email, and then they want the password, and then from their user's email they can find out, you know, where do they have accounts, on what kind of websites they have accounts, what are their interests, that kind of stuff. And if they have their password, a lot of people use the same password pretty much everywhere. So you just need their email. A lot of times the user's email and the password to that email is the same as the username's password on that website. So when people get data dumps, they might get, you know, 10,000 users and it might be the case that 9500 users are smart, but 500 are stupid. And that's what they're after. They're after the passwords in relation to the emails or maybe in relation to the username, uh, especially if it's, you know, a website that maybe has more sensitive data on it. A website like pythonprogramming.net, not really. They're not interested in stealing your account or anything like that. Oh, on there, but what they would be interested in is your password in relation to your email. And then they would try to find any accounts that use that email online. They would try to find any connected um, accounts with different emails. They would try basically variations of that password on your email and any other accounts that use that email. So anyway, when you have something like this, it's not impossible, but it's very difficult for someone to actually figure out what your password might be because they could even guess that your password is password but when they compare when they run that through there's no way for them to really truly know if those are identical unless of course they use the same the same passlib but if you were to look at, at passlib you would find that there's actually some unique characteristics in the back end of passlib that will kind of protect you even from from that but if they i suppose got on your server you might be in a little trouble anyway um enough on that again not an encryption expert by any means, but this is the method that you would want to use. I know that uh, Flask does have like a Flask login thing, 
Uh, I was really unhappy with it, so if you want to check that out, go for it. See if you can use it comfortably. Uh, I didn't really like it, and I found Passlib instead because the main thing that you need is Passlib. You need to protect those user passwords, and you never want to pass around those passwords in plain text. So as soon as the password is input, you need to convert it. Um, other than that, you know how you handle the rest of the system can sometimes be confusing, but that's why we're having a tutorial on it. So, uh, that's it for this video. Just want to show you how password hashing works and should work. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.